Hey there everyone. Today we're going to be doing the much requested screen shake. So what uh, you need to do is set up a frame and for right now I just put a backdrop on the frame uh, and you need to make sure that your frame is bigger than your window size because this is going to be scrolling essentially. The screen shake requires you to also be able to scroll. You can't do it if the window is the same size as your frame. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is insert an active object, and this is going to be our camera object. This is going to be the object that the camera, <clears throat> the game camera follows. So we're going to call this camera, and let's go ahead and do that. Let's say always, we're going to uh, center, where is that at? Scrolling, center window position and frame relative to our active object. Okay, now we're going to be doing moving this through some trigonometric functions. So these are good to learn because with this you can do some sine wave movements or draw some circles. So we're going to use generally the same thing. We're going to modify t a bit. <clears throat> Instead of being uh, time, we're going to make it a random number. All right, so we need to add some alterable values. So we're going to need a uh, center x, a center y, and amplitude could use frequency too, but we're not going to do that for this one. So call this center X. The second one is center Y. And this is amp. Center X and center Y are going to be the <coughs> uh, positions, the, the, it's going to be where the center of this object is, this camera object. You'll see in a second. Uh, for right now, we're just going to make this camera, this shake just be stationary, but you can also have this camera follow a player object or whatever you want and that is that is going to be controlled by center x to center y that is what is is the camera object is going to be centered on so <clears throat> what we need to do is initialize this because we want to have our center x and center y be the initial position of this camera otherwise it'll end up at zero zero so start of frame we're going to set their alterable value of center x to the current position of our camera object and we're going to set the center Y to be the Y position. All right, <clears throat> so now we need to control our screen shake. What we're gonna do is say always, <clears throat> and we are always going to set the position, the X coordinate of our camera object to be the value center X plus that is a link to a previous YouTube video. That shouldn't be there anyway. Uh, so it's center X of the camera plus, um, okay, it's T, it's function T equals sine T. So this is gonna be plus um, sine. <clears throat> and the number for sine we're gonna have is random. Oh, let's see, two pi, a 3.4, that's 628. So let's just say 628 and we let's see sine random 628 that's time now we need the amplitude uh multiplied by our amp and i'm missing a bracket where's my bracket random here it is okay sorry <clears throat> there needs to be another bracket at the end there of after sine so we got center of x of the camera plus sine of random 628 times our amplitude. Now amp right now is zero, so nothing will happen. So we're gonna control the shake by setting the amplitude to a number, and we need to make sure that, that as long as the amplitude is greater than zero, it is always subtracting because we want the shake to, to progressively lessen. Hopefully that makes some sense. So we need to also say, <coughs> click on our, our object here, and say compared to one of the alterable values, and if amplitude, is greater than zero, then I'll subtract one from amplitude. And now we need to be able to set our amp, so we'll just do it on a key press, but this would be wherever you want to have the screen shake, so like, you know, whenever a brick hits the ground or you get punched really hard. Anyway, uh, upon pressing a key, we're gonna make it number one. <clears throat> we're going to set the amplitude to uh, let's try one. Let's try 100 or 50. We'll do 50 right, for right now. 
All right, this should work. Let's give it a shot and see what happens. All right, if I press one, this should shake left and right on the X. Boom. All right, works perfect. And you see how it, it, the amplitude is, is being lessened. Now we also need to do the same thing for, well, a similar thing for uh, the Y coordinate. Ah, so let's do that now. It's gonna be under the same always event that we had the X position change. So we're gonna say, <clears throat> always set the, uh, wait, my pet set the position. All right, always set the uh, Y position, or the Y coordinate of our camera object to the value center Y. And this is going to be cosine of random uh, 624. Wait, is that right? 628. No, it, doesn't, it doesn't really matter. This could be anything. This is essentially, this number is a random, <clears throat> if you think about graphing, you're graphing a sine wave, this is the time over which that sine wave would be graphed. Um, I just want to make sure that it got it, at least uh, an iteration of a complete movement. I didn't want to have more, I didn't want to have an incomplete circle, so, but this could be anything, this could be a hundred, a thousand, whatever. Uh, it, it's just essentially going to pick a random point on that time to give you that direction. We're trying to get the outside of a circle and shrink it. Anyway, uh, center Y camera plus cosine of random 628, yeah that's right, um, time amplitude. Okay. Again, I missed my bracket. Make sure you put that bracket there. All right, uh, center Y, cosine, right? Yep, that looks good. Let's test this one out. It should jitter all over the place. Boom, 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 look at that. All right, and so you also then would want to obviously make the camera object invisible. So let's do that now. Let's get rid of visible at start. And let's have some more key presses for different amplitudes so you can kind of see um, what different strengths of amplitude would look like for your screen shake. So we had fit, let's set number one to, instead of 50, let's make it 10. We'll go progressively up by 10. This will be, actually we'll just make this 50, sorry. We'll make that one 50 and the third will be 100. So this is just to test out amplitude strengths. So number one is our small shake, that's a tiny little shake. Two is a, a moderate shake. Three is a big shake. Boom, boom. So uh, 10 is actually no good. That's way too small, let's try 20. There was not enough shake on a 10. Okay, there you go, 20 is much better. Boom, boom, boom. It'd be like if a bullet hits you in the face or something. Okay, <clears throat> now as I said before, um, you can also, instead of having this, this shake be stationary, this because this is part of your camera, you can have the camera object follow something else, and you do that by, by setting uh, the center X and center Y to be the X and Y coordinate of what you want to follow. So, for example, we could have another object, we'll just throw an active object in here. We're going to name this active object uh, Bob, and we're going to give Bob a built-in movement. He's going to have a eight direction movement. And then we are going to have to set up another under always. We're going to always set uh, on the camera object the ultra value. We're not add to. We're going to always set. I always misclick stuff. We're going to always set center X to be the X position of Bob. And then always set center Y to be the Y position of Bob. Now with this should work. Let's see if it works. Should be able to move around. Okay, so we got this found. We should still have our screen shake though. Yep. Boom, boom, boom. There we go. Oh my God, what is happening? And uh, you could also make this screen shake a little smoother if you didn't like it, because it's a little rough a bit because we are just randomly popping the camera around. I mean, it's smooth enough in my opinion, but you could also um, probably add a tween to it so that it gets to these positions that are randomly set smoothly. I don't know if there's enough time though between shakes to do that. But you can give that a shot to try to smooth it out. That might work. But uh, for, uh, for our purposes today, we are done. This is how you do a screen shake, or at least this is how I do a screen shake. So I hope that you guys found this video educational. 
If you have any more requests, as always, put them in the comments. And if you have any questions about this, I will try to get back to you as soon as I can. I'm pretty busy nowadays, so I can't guarantee it'll be quick. So uh, as always, guys, thanks for watching and have a great one.